bug. How's that bug up your nose feel? Aw, she went there. It's a true story, YouTube. We're going to share this with you. Kate and I were in the middle of our interview. We had to take a break. A bug flew up my nose. Look who we're hanging with. That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging with the Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomacher, and we are here at the Henniger Center for the Performing Arts. We have been here all day long, courtesy of our great friends at Brevard Film and Talent, and we have been hanging with some fantastic filmmakers and creative artists of all kinds. We hope that you go ahead and hit subscribe. Come back every day for a new author, author artist, filmmaker, creative minds of all kinds, sitting in this chair, chatting with me, about all kinds of stuff. And right now, we get to hang with author and the star of Bravo's Below Decks, Kate Shestin. Hi. How are you? Very well. Thank you for having me. Busy lady. So busy. Busy yes. is good. Busy is very good. Yeah. If we're not busy, folks, artistic people get really crazy. Antsy. I shop a lot if I'm not busy. Well, now we know where those royalty checks are going. I still fit it in, though. Yeah. Well, you got to manage to, you know, yeah, you need some me time. Yes. Mental health days, we call yes. those. I don't know if that's what they call them at Macy's. They should call them that. They because should have then a sale. We, that's right. A mental health day sale, and we'll yep. be there. Like Genius. It is. It's brilliant. See? Speaking of retail. Yes. I Actually, maybe I should have one of those sales at my store. Okay. I just opened up a store in downtown Melbourne called Genesis Boutique. Wow. Um, all proceeds go to Genesis House, which is a... Shelter for women and children in need. That's fantastic. Uh, yep, and it's upscale resale of women's clothing and home decor. That's fantastic. You are really are busy. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're going to take this in order. I'm going to okay. check this. Okay. Pretend like I know what I'm sure. doing. Okay. Author. Yes. Tell us, a, how did you start writing? Tell us about your book. Well, um, after college, I decided I want to take like a gap year, so I went to work on yachts. and. I didn't plan to do it for longer than a year. I thought I'd come back, use my college degree, but I loved it. So I just kept doing it for like seven years. We, I would go to uh, the Caribbean every winter and oh. the Mediterranean every summer. I crossed she's the Atlantic she's Ocean. A, she's a slave to this career thing. I think I am a, a workaholic, really, a actually, a workaholic. in hindsight. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so this was, I started writing my book about eight years ago before social media was huge. And like we didn't always have internet out on the, in the middle uh, of the you, ocean. You, you've just crashed their brain. I know. You know, they're the web. I know. They it was when hashtag was a pound sign. Do you know what that means? They have no idea. Right. We used to push it on the phone. Google it. Surrey, what's a pound sign? Anyways. Wow, we just set everybody's phone I off. I know, it's, it's crazy. It's awesome, I love that. Stay with us. Yes, yeah, stick with so, us here, okay? There was a time. Yes, uh, there were dinosaurs swimming around in the ocean, it was crazy. They were watching videotapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, VHS, um, <laughs> OMG. Oh. So anyways, I had a lot of time on my hands and uh, you know, I was hosting b the richest people on the planet. That's the w top 1% that can afford a yacht. And I was seeing them at their most relaxed time, vacationing, drinking. Um, we're talking like Russian oligarchs and then we'd have celebrities charter the boat. And it was really a glimpse into this secret world and there was travel and celebrities and the yachties that work on these boats are all like, international and young. Did and you create that word, the yachties? Or is no, that a thing? I wish is I that a could thing? take credit for that. Hashtag yachties. Hashtag yachties. Yeah, trending. Anyways. Boom. We just yeah. blew up the internet. I love doing That's that. That's right. Kate and I. Yep. At the top of our game right now. Uh, so I had, I was like, man, I don't know why I felt compelled to write the story. I guess I kind of, it was really hard actually. It was kind of like a, um, I learned more during my time in yachting than I did in school because you're put in this adverse situation, cut off from your family, your friends, out of your comfort zone, uh, living in very close quarters with a bunch of different nationalities, customs, you know. Yeah. And um, it's hard work, like 16-hour days for two months. But the money's great. So, um, Which is why we work I when we're I kind of had like yeah. a little, when you, if you were ironing in a laundry room with no windows for two months, because I had to start at the bottom, you kind of have a lot of time with your thoughts. So I started praying. There's this whole big, great thing. And um, hashtag pray. Anyways. Pray emoji. <laughs> I like her. So, anyways, She's fun. 
um, I started writing this book about all my travels, and um, I really liked, it was kind of a catharsis and a creative outlet, which we all yeah. like, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, when it was done, I was like, wow, I, I really like this, but, you know, what are the odds of me just little old Kate getting a book deal? Probably not good. And then I heard that Bravo was coming out with a reality show about yachting. Uh, they had already filmed the first season, mm -hmm. but when I got a call from a friend in the industry saying, guess what, you'll never, there's a reality show, because we always said that it could be, but we never thought they would do it, because what billionaire did. would be like, yeah, sure, come on, cameras, well, get on my know, yacht. If you guys remember, yeah. way back when we were like kids, I did they not had, watch The Love Boat. No, 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 but they had, uh, Robin Leach used to do Lifestyles yeah, yeah. of the Rich and Famous. Yeah. And he would go, and, and not just Yachty, but he would go to mansions and sure. these great places. There's always been a hunger from the rest of us, sure. the 99% of us, yeah, that's to why know I liked what it. those 1% yeah. live like. And so it, it does make sense that it would translate over. Right. Although, you know, most of us think, oh, it makes sense, which is why they won't do it. <laughs> well, and, and also, it's what... It's a very secret world. Like, the billionaires mm -hmm. like their privacy. Some of them have um, lasers that when paparazzi try to take photos, the lasers shoot into the lens and destroy the camera. Um, so, no selfies on that boat. Look, uncool people. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, and then also when I heard that there was actually a reality show coming out, it kind of validated my idea that the public would be interested in, in, this, in this topic. Yeah. yeah. So, I kind of just, ha when I, then when I heard it was on Bravo, which I already loved, I was like, I, just, I have to be on the show. So I was working as a chief stewardess on a yacht, 150 feet. And I would watch the first season of Below Deck, Below Deck, like while the yacht owners are eating dinner, I'd like run up, give them their wine, come back down right, and watch. Now that's a great backstage yeah. moment when you can actually see the yacht staff watching Below Decks. So meta. Below Decks. It's, there's so, so much happening there. Yeah. It is. It blows your mind, yeah. doesn't it? So you got your book out mm -hmm. the reality show going right and and somehow you managed to open up a boutique for charity yes well wow i only film like six weeks a year so that gives me like the luxury of time which is not great for us creative people so then i was like you know helping out with genesis house and i love uh shopping at thrift stores and i just realized that they didn't have one so i mentioned it nice. and then a month later we're signing a lease and they said here are the keys Good luck, and I Fantastic. had no idea what I was doing. That is awesome. Um, I understand that you also have a podcast. Okay, this is where things got a little hairy last year. So a little hairy, a little crazy. Before I knew I was going to open the store, I got back from filming. Uh, we filmed in St. Martin last year. And so it was like around May, and I was like, you know, I want to... Podcast is a great outlet, it avenue, is. and it's like really coming up. And I listen to podcasts while I clean or whatever, mm -hmm. drink wine. Um, so cleaning and drinking wine, you know, you only the, get like the, half the dishes right. done, but so anyways, there's always that one glass I, left in the sink. Yeah. Figure I'm, it out. I'm, I'm <laughs> so anyway, I, I empty that one out. So I realized I just went on YouTube and I was like, how to make a podcast. And I named it after deck and I started a hashtag for it. I started a Twitter for it and the fans got excited. Yeah. So excited that. At first, Bravo was like, wait a second, you can't do that, <laughs> because they wanted it. Yes. So then I said, well, why can't I do it? Kind of, you know, pushed back. And I, with, yeah. So it took a while for it to go up the chain and get approved. And in the meantime, I was like, well, that dream's probably not going to happen, so I'll open a store. I get the keys to the store, and then I get an email saying, you're starting your podcast next week. So. All in the first week of September, wow. I opened a store that I'd never done before, winging it. Uh, started a podcast for the first time. My show aired on TV, and I was so busy. For the next decade, yeah. sleep is an option. Yeah. It's not like a thing she does every night. Yeah. Like just an optional thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because it is just planning the content for a podcast is, you know, we have, yeah. we, have we, we have, in addition to our daily interview show, we have a weekly radio hour podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, just planning for it. And, it's you know, so much more work than I thought it would be. Yeah. It, it really is. is. It is. It, I really did. When they asked me if I wanted to do the podcast weekly, mm -hmm. and I, th I thought, well, I do the daily episodes anyway. Of course I could fit that in. How hard can How it, it's hard an can hour it be? talking a week? That is, by the way, that is the worst question that an artist can yeah. ever ask. Because when they, they're going to find out. If we say, how hard can it be, we're going to know. Yeah. And if it's not hard enough, why not? Let's, let's go next let's go level. Go to the next level. That's right. I'm really Put it up tired, there on the next and that's level. when I'll like... Um, so, what what are you talking about in the podcast primarily? So now that it's approved. 
It started out that I was just interviewing my cast members after each episode and kind of getting their feedback. And it was like if they had a drama heavy episode, that's who I would have on. But then I had some like verified, well known followers on Twitter that would like, like celebrities give me support. They like the show. So I said, hey, why don't we try and get Come on and talk. Kristen that's Chenoweth right. to be on my podcast? Let's shoot for the moon. She said yes. So now... That, by I, the way, is the most amazing thing when it happens to you when you start making phone calls and you're like, hey, would you be on my show? That's crazy. And, and you really, in, in your mind, you're thinking, they're just, there's no way they're going to want to do that. Is that what she thought when you asked me? Yes, I did. And then I got really excited because she said, yes! Of course. Uh, Lucky Charming has hit number one on Amazon. It was a number one new release. Number one new yes. release. That's a hard thing to do, by the way. It was... A Amazing All of our feeling. authors are hugely jealous. Like I hashtag was author envy. Obsessively checking my author rank like every hour like, when I first released it. Uh, I don't do that anymore because uh, when this show's not on, it's not as high. It's not yet. Yeah. But I mean, I, it felt good. I mean, it was a, a long time coming. It writing does. a book, writing a book is like the worst endeavor ever. That's what Nobody I do, has an attention I, span. I what I Nobody do reads. Time. It's. Oh. <laughs> Breaking my heart. But I, I, this I is what still I do. did it. I, I have five books out there now. Is it? And you? So can you relate? That yes, I do. Think it about is, it, it if is. you're born with like musical talent, you can just be singing in the background, and your talent will waft through people's ears. Nobody's going to accidentally read a book. That's true. You know. That's true. Mm -hmm. I wish there were accidental readers. That's where the audiobook comes in. Nice. Coming out 2018. There you go. <laughs> so you want to hear? One of the number one best-selling releases. While you're doing the dishes. While you're doing the dishes. And then you're going to go in and you're going to turn on Bravo and you're going to watch Below Deck. Tuesdays at 9. Tuesdays at 9 Eastern? Yes. Eastern. Tuesdays at 9 Eastern. That would be 8 Central. And the rest of you could figure it out. Stream it. Just yeah. binge it. Do what the rest of us do. Binge. That's like yeah. our weekend when we're not doing this show is binge watching. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what people do now. What do you binge watch? Everything. L I'm a latest. Pop, I'm, a, I'm a pop culture show, so I actually have to do things. I, everything that's on the CW homework. right now, it's homework. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sci-Fi Channel, we watch uh, arts and entertainment shows on Bravo. Um, wow, I mean, it's just like constant Game of Thrones. Which we're now waiting I for. I haven't started it yet. Not at all? No. I don't love love dragons and wizards, but now I feel like I have to watch it because it's such a pop culture thing. Yeah, so it is. There's no I reference. seven seasons. It's, I right, know I have to, don't just I? Just only one Khaleesi's. piece of advice. One piece of advice. What? Don't like anybody. Jakaris. Just don't like anyone. Anyone that you think you like, tell yourself in your mind you don't like them. It's a good metaphor for life. Yeah. I'm really good at that because already. Because George Martin finds out. He know, even though the seasons, setting. technically the seasons are already out there and aired, I'm pretty sure George Martin has like a contract in his clause. If you like someone that hasn't died, he John can go Snow. back and kill them. Oh. He just will. He wow. just does. He kills everybody that you love. Well. It's like a thing. Dark. I don't know why. It is so dark. So it's a romantic comedy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to finish saying thank you to our partners and friends at Some Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and the Funniest, Krypton Radio, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics, Asylum and Convention Entertainment Services. These are the people who share our videos and these arts and entertainment professionals all over the World Wide Web. We hope you will too. Remember everybody, we have been hanging with author and star of Bravo's Below Decks, Kate Chastain. 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 And you can find out more by hitting the links down below. In the meantime, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Really. <laughs>